Hi there, Nick Honeycutt here. I wanted to show you how to export content and bring it into new Blackboard course sites. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, I've got the course that I want to move the content from here. I'm going to scroll down under Packages and Utilities. I'm going to click Open Packages and Utilities and I'm going to click Export slash Archive Course. Now there's a subtle differences between exporting and archiving the course. Uh, it's a good idea to archive the course as well. Archiving the course is going to save all of the student files that you're going to have in your class. So it's going to include anything that a student has uploaded to the class, or whether it be a paper, a discussion board post, or a blog posting. And it's going to keep that with their username and actual name. Whereas exporting a course is just going to take the course content. So you can flip it over. So what we're going to do is export the course, but I, like I say, I recommend that you archive courses as well in the unlikely event that you'll have a grade challenge. I, th I usually keep those for two years uh, in case a student comes back and has a, a grade challenge. Uh, but exporting, that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to click the export button right here. It's going to give you these options. Just leave them as the default. Now we want to select the course material that we want to export. What I usually do is I usually click all of these boxes because there's nothing worse than X going to the trouble of exporting the course and then realizing that you forgot that you, had, you were used a particular tool or setting or whatnot. So I check all these boxes. And then you're going to hit submit. So now it's telling me that the, the action has been queued and that email will be sent when the process is complete. So this should take anywhere from 30 seconds to 5 minutes usually, uh, depending on how large your course is. So I'm going to pause this real quick and I'll be right back. So here's the email I just received. It says export in the subject line and the course that I exported. Uh, it says the operation is completed and may be downloaded from the control panel. That's good news. So let's go back. I do have one warning here. It looks like an image file that wasn't moved over. It's one file. It's one image file. Not a big deal. If you do have multiple ones warnings down here, that's when you want to uh, double check and make sure that there's not uh, major problems uh, when you import it. So now I'm going to go back here into the, the course I want to move the content from. You'd think we've already hit export, we're ready to go, but again we have to click export slash archive course to sort of refresh the screen and show us uh, what we just sort of spooled together. So here's the file. I'm going to click on this and I've got mine set up to ask me where I want to save it, so I'm going to save the file. I'm saving it into my downloads folder, but you could just as easily save it to your uh, desktop somewhere. This is another place where you want to make sure you're using Firefox because it seems like the Safari setting, the default Safari setting is for it to unzip any zip files in Safari and what this does is it corrupts the Blackboard files. So make sure you're using Firefox and you keep the file zipped. Uh, you don't want to unzip the file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the new course that I want to import uh, this course content into. Here we go. Let me scroll down. I'm going to go into Packages and Utilities once more. And Import Package slash View Logs. You might be tempted to click Import Course Cartridge, but that in fact is for a publisher's content. So we're going to click Import Package slash View Logs. And we're going to click Import Package and find the wherever we decided to save our zip file. So I saved mine or downloads and desktop I believe, so export file here it is. So yeah it's going to be listed as export file, the first, that's, so if you need to search by alphabetical you can, you can start looking in the E section. So here we have to, now we have to select the materials that we want to import. This is when you can be a little bit more selective. So let's say I definitely want to do the content areas, adaptive release rules, maybe not so much just because the calendars change from semester to semester. I uh, usually don't bring in the announcements, I like to do those fresh. I do include the blogs, 
I don't include the calendar because Google Calendar actually, if you embed it in Blackboard, I think that's a lot more effective uh, than the calendar within Blackboard. Collaboration sessions, I don't do those because that's not referring to Blackboard Collaborate, but in fact a separate thing within Blackboard called the Virtual Classroom, I believe, that's that's for that uh, Blackboard Collaborate blows out of the water. So I would don't do that. I don't do contact contacts. I do do discussion boards. Uh, I do do grade center columns. I do do grade group settings, journals, rubrics, settings here. Uh, let's might as well do that. And then this and this. So that's what, depending on how you do your course, maybe you might have some of these other tools, but I know the way that I do my course, uh, I usually don't. But if you're, if you, if in doubt, be sure to check the, the checkbox there. Alright, so again we get this green flag up here. The action has been queued. An email will be sent when the process is complete. So I'm going to pause until we receive that email. All right, so here we go. I got the import. It says the operation has completed. This time it says import in the subject line. And it tells me the results down below. So it's telling me for a discussion board that the user for this particular discussion board could not be located. So that just means that the student who posted something, or any of the students who posted something last semester, they're not in this new course, which is to be expected. So I think that looks like what the majority of these error messages are. Yeah, they all have to do with the discussion board. And that's sort of to be expected, so that's not a big deal. So now I'm going to go into this course, and I should be able to just click on any of these other areas, and it should show the, the updated content. Yep, you can see my uh, menu over here has changed. But what you will notice is that it's much longer uh, than it was before. What Blackboard does is it doesn't delete anything when it imports something. So before you noticed the default tools, announcements through tools or help down here, I think that's what was on there before. So what Blackboard does is instead of deleting all that stuff, it keeps those things there and just adds whatever you wanted to bring in in addition to that, which is right here on the menu item. So I'm just going to go in and delete any of these. If you don't like to delete, uh, another option for you to do would be to hide hide the link here. Some people get freaked out when they delete, but when you hide the link, you're still going to see it unless you turn edit mode off. So I just prefer, since I know I'm not going to use those, I've already got my class set up the way I want to. And if I did want to add something back uh, in this new version of Blackboard, it's all right here with this plus sign. So if I wanted to add, most of the time you want to add a content area if you want to upload a syllabus or something like that, or if you want to create uh, an email link, uh, usually that's that's what you want to do with create tool link. So if I let's say I wanted to add an email link under here, call it email. That's how you would do that. Make sure you check available to users. So that's sort of a nice new thing in this new version. But anyway, I'm going to delete all these. Well, you don't have to watch me do all that, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I can check, double check the content that I brought over to make sure that it looks right. So that looks good. Let me go into my uh, grade center settings, a submission area, I should say. So yeah, this looks like it brought over all the assignments, which is good. Cool. So yeah, that's how it's done. Uh, please feel free to contact me at nshunnic at uncg.edu if you have any questions. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Take care.